For the past 20 plus years, the Lexus RX has built a reputation for itself for being comfortable, reliable, luxurious, but also boring. For 2023, Lexus is trying to change all that with the all new fifth generation RX, and this more specifically, this model here, which is known as the RX 500H F Sport Performance. It pairs for the first time ever, a turbocharged engine with two powerful electric motors, including a really powerful one at the back axle. So today I'm actually out here in Santa Maria, California to drive the new RX and the big question I want answered, has Lexus truly developed a more performance oriented RX that could compete with Europe? Stay tuned to find out. Now, before we start talking about the completely redesigned exterior styling of the new RX, I want to show you guys what's powering this vehicle underneath the hood because RX 500H F Sport Performance is quite a nameful. And what the hell does that exactly mean? Well, it means we pair a 2.4 liter direct injection turbocharged four cylinder. This is the same engine that you find in the all new RX 350, which replaces the old 3.5 liter V6. It's paired with an electric motor at the front and a more powerful E axle motor generator at the back. That motor, Lexus says, offers up to 80 kilowatts of power, which if you, I remember correctly, that's the same output that you get out of the rear motor in the Toyota BZ4X all-electric SUV. Uh, now, the engine by itself in this application makes 275 horsepower. When you combine it with the two electric motors and a nickel metal hydride battery pack, which Lexus didn't disclose how big the battery is now, remember this is not a plug-in, this is just a standard hybrid, offers up to 367 horsepower, making this the most powerful RX of the company has ever built. It also offers a combined up to 406 pound-feet of torque. So those are some pretty impressive numbers. It puts it right in line with all of the turbo six-cylinder competition that you find in this particular segment. The interesting thing about this hybrid is it's paired with a six-speed automatic transmission. That's right, Lexus uses a six-speed, they say for performance reasons, although I'm surprised they didn't want to use an eight or a 10-speed transmission. They do have that in their arsenal. And as I said before, this vehicle has a, a motor at the back axle giving it all-wheel drive. Now the rear axle, because it's very powerful, Lexus says, has the ability to kind of give you an 80-20% torque split. So this can feel more like a rear-wheel drive car in certain conditions. It knows kind of when to switch that around with torque vectoring, depending on how you're driving this vehicle. Now, in terms of the fuel economy, Lexus already had that available. It's rated at 27 in the city and 26 on the highway. So not in terribly impressive gas, impressive gas mileage. However, this has been tuned for performance by the 350H if you want better fuel economy. Uh, and in terms of towing, this vehicle here should tow about 35 500 pounds. I couldn't find the exact fi figure. This is still a very early pre-production model. And in terms of the curb weight, this new platform uh, is about 200 pounds lighter. So as this one sits here, it weighs in at just under 4,900 pounds, which honestly is not that much heavier versus the old RX 450H L. Now let's go ahead and close the hood and take a look at the styling of this vehicle because when Lexus first showed off this car uh, a couple months ago, a lot of you didn't really like this new grille. Remember, Lexus has always been embracing that spindle grille. However, they're now calling it a spindle body. So the grille, as you can see, is almost completely vertically upright. The F Sport Performance includes the intricate L's that form like a kind of a mesh finish in the grille with the black painted area. You can see here, it's completely painted in this ultra white. Certainly looks a little bit polarizing when you first see this vehicle, but I will say in person in this ultra white with the black accents, I think it looks really good. You have the signature Lexus full LED headlights. Uh, this model here has the optional triple beam LEDs where you have the Nike swoosh for an LED running light. You have LED turn signals. There's an area right here, surprisingly, where this looks like it's part of the headlight, but it's actually a gloss black piece. So the headlight itself kind of has an interesting shape. And then down here you can see uh, a lot of these grill openings, some of them are functional, some of them are fake. There are LED fog lights that you can get. And then right here, there's almost like a, a little um, horseshoe puck right here or something like a little swoosh. This is painted in black when you guys go for the F Sport Performance. There's also an F Sport handling that gives you kind of a silver accent. There is one silver accent piece at the front fascia. And then of course you have the big Lexus logo here that houses the radar sensor for the Lexus Safety System 3.0. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below of the styling. I think it looks fantastic in this ultra white exterior with the black accents. Now coming around the side profile, you can see the overall silhouette of the RX hasn't really changed. There's still that signature floating roof design at the back, which the RX has had for a few years. However, the in terms of the dimensions, Lexus did stretch the wheelbase of this car by two and a half inches. So it's now 112.4 inches or 112.2 inches. 
The overall length remains the same at 192 and a half inches. Lexus says they didn't want to make it any longer because they already thought it was the perfect size. They did make it, however, an inch wider and about a half an inch lower. And then when they stretched the wheelbase out, they were able to push the wheels out to the corners. So it gives it more of a sportier look. It looks less like a minivan, I think, versus the previous generation. For those of you who want the L, that has been discontinued. It wasn't a great seller anyways. There is an actual three-row SUV coming that'll have a different name. However, Lexus wasn't ready to talk about that just yet. Now, the wheels, the F Sport Performance version, you can see, has a beautiful satin black finish to the 21-inch five-spoke wheels. They're wrapped in two 35-50 R21-inch tires. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUV tires, so it's technically an all-season tire, but you can see it has the look of a summer performance tire. It looks great. The brakes, that really shocked me. You have these 15.4-inch rotors at the front. They're almost two and a half inches bigger versus the non-F Sport model. And then you also have these um, uh, six piston high performance calipers, which are painted in black with the Lexus logo stamped on it. The brakes were a huge surprise because I wasn't expecting the company to put some massive aggressive brakes. You also have adaptive dampers on this car, no air suspension. Lexus also didn't talk about the ground clearance. And then you can see here, a lot of the fender flares and the side trim has all been painted. So that gives it a very sportier look as opposed to the um, gray finish that you'll find on the other trims. Now over here, you can see the mirror is black painted. That's how you know it's an F Sport model. You also have this F Sport badge here, which has a black background. That's also how you know this is an F Sport performance, along with the uh, black chrome along the window trim and along uh, the roof where you see that panoramic glass roof, which is optional. Uh, the rear axle of this car also includes four wheel steering. So the rear wheels can actually turn up to four degrees, either in the same direction or the opposite direction, depending on your speed. And then you can see here the floating roof design. It's a little bit cleaner this year. I think it looks fantastic, of course, with the overall silhouette and the white and black accents of this vehicle. The back of the new RX, you can see has some of the new Lexus signature design elements here. You've got the light blade, full, full length LED tail lights. You can see it's LED turn signals, LED reverse lights. Instead of the Lexus logo, it now spells out Lexus at the back, just like the new NX, just like the new uh, Lexus LX. And then you can see here RX 500H Direct 4, which is technically the same technology that we find in their upcoming Lexus RZ 350 which I haven't had a chance to drive yet. That'll be coming sometime next year. You can see the rear bumper also has a much more aggressive splitter. Uh, and then there's some fake vents over here. No visible exhaust tips. Remember, this is an electrified vehicle, uh, but overall, I think it looks very much like an RX, just a little bit more modern. Now, opening up the trunk capacity, sadly, Lexus didn't have any cargo figures just yet for us for the new RX, but you can see here, because it's a two row only model, I'd probably say this looks around 40-ish cubic feet of space. If you wanna fold down those seats, uh, which Lexus does offer a power function. You can see, just push this little button over here. It's actually kind of spring actuated or hydraulically assisted. This should expand it out to what I want to say is just under 80 cubic feet of space. So this should offer one of the biggest cargo areas in the segment, which is definitely going to be useful. Underneath here, you can see there is a, a temporary spare tire, which gives you a jack so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So now that we've talked about the exterior design of the new RX, let's go ahead and move on to the interior. Now, I really, really like this color combination with the ultra white, with the Rioja red, specific to this F Sport model. It just makes for a really great color combination that I think a lot of people are gonna like. Now, in terms of the interior, as you can see, it looks really nice at a glance. If you spend some time in the NX, this is gonna look pretty familiar. These are the F Sport specific seats. Uh, they adjust in 10 different ways. They're also heated and ventilated, which is nice. And you also have a four-way lumbar adjustment and uh, three-person memory, which I think is you know what you expect in a vehicle in this particular segment. Now, getting in, I don't have the ground clearance figure, but it's really easy to step into this vehicle. It's got a great step in height. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of the GAK platform, the same one that it shares with the new Lexus NX. Now, here's the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is the same Lexus key fob that they've used in other models. I kind of wish that it showed like F Sport something to show that you had a special model. You can also use your phone as a key if you have access to the new Lexus Interform interface app to start the vehicle up. You can see the button is right here. It's not even blocked by the steering wheel, which is nice. And remember, this is a hybrid, so it doesn't have the standard traditional starter noise like in the uh, RX350, which is only a gas version or gas only vehicle. Uh, and once the vehicle starts up, you heard it has a different chime and it has a really nice looking interior, massive 14 inch display with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We've seen this system before in the new Lexus NX. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail with that. Uh, and in terms of uh, the interior materials, let's go ahead and start with the door panel. Now the Lexus NX had somewhat of a nice interior, but also had some cheap materials. 
The RX is bigger, it's more expensive. You can see this upper portion of the door panel is a soft touch injection molded plastic. I love the suede Alcantara with the red stitching that you get with this model here. You've got the upgraded Mark Levinson stereo, which is nice. The window controls also feel pretty high quality and tactile. Uh, all four of the windows are one touch up and down, which is nice. Um, they have metal accents to them. They also have power folding mirrors, which is great. The door handles of this vehicle, you can see, have that digital latch system. So I just have to push this little button that opens the door. If the power goes out, you can basically pull on this twice and that allows you to open the door in case the vehicle is actually dead. Uh, there's also a nice padded armrest over here that has the same kind of red, Rioja red leather, which by the way, the F-Sport model has genuine leather. If you guys step it down to the F-Sport handling package, it'll include a new Lux, which is the faux leather. The semi-aniline leather is in the luxury trim. That's going to have probably the softest seats. The Sport model also has a slightly more unique steering wheel, very thick nine and three grip. You have paddles on the wheel. There's an F Sport badge over here. And then you can see the wheel itself is a power tilt and telescoping function, which is definitely nice. This model here that we're driving is a pretty early, early prototype, but the interior definitely still feels pretty nice. The upper part of the dashboard here you can see has a soft touch injection molded plastic. There is some interesting real aluminum trim. This is included when you go for the F Sport package. Lexus also offers some wood options if you go for a luxury trim. This is also soft touch. There's more of that suede here on the upper part of the dash. This area here is even soft touch, which is nice. There's a really nice heads up display. Uh, which definitely gives you all the useful information. Then you have a seven inch display over here, which is slightly customizable. If you wanna customize the display, you have to go into the drive mode here, which is now in the screen. You can see it gives you a tack over there, uh, which also gives you a boost gauge with this model, which is interesting. You can also kind of adjust this based on the controls over here. Um, the tack is the only way you can, or the only way you can get a tack is if you put it into sport, because if you go to normal, you can see it gives you a power meter instead, um, which is something that, again, uh, is more relevant if you guys are driving in this hybrid or in, in a hybrid mode. This model here I mentioned earlier is a very early prototype, so there might be a couple of warning lights that you see in here. You'll have to ignore that because uh, this one is a very early build. Now, uh, looking at this screen over here, you can see there's the CarPlay. When it pulls up, it's a really nice size. It's also quick. It's snappy. The resolution is fantastic. I love the heated and cooled seats, although I do wish that Lexus gave us a hard button as opposed to these touch sensitive buttons. I do like, however, how the climate portion stays in place. You also have two level heated steering wheel. You have tri-zone climate control. You do have a volume knob and two um, climate control dials to adjust the temperature of this vehicle. If you push this button here, you can see it gives you a full 360 scan perimeter scan along with a full 360 camera when you put the vehicle in reverse. So if I put it into reverse here, you can see it gives you front and rear parking sensors. It also has advanced park. That's where you're hearing the sensors come from. And it gives you a nice top-down view. So Lexus has done a good job with making this far nicer versus the previous generation. And then over here, you can see you've got uh, up to four USB charging ports, just one USB-A if you wanna actually connect your phone via wire. Um, there's also a little bit of storage here, a wireless phone charging pad here, a deeper storage compartment here, and then you can also close this up with the same aluminum trim. It actually feels cold, so that's how you know it's genuine aluminum. There's now a shift-by-wire shifter right here. Uh, this is the same joystick controller that we've seen in the new Lexus NX. You can see cup holders over here. There's almost like an off-road mode here. Um, I guess if you take this vehicle slightly off-road and then your electronic parking brake is over here. Nice padded center console area here, which is nice. And then this lid opens up in two ways. You can open it from the driver's side or from the passenger side, which is nice how they kind of give you the choice of that. I think the seats are also comfortable and they also are really aggressively bolstered. Um, the F-Sport Performance has even more aggressively bolstered seats. So try them out before you buy this car. I think it fits my frame uh, pretty nicely. Uh, and in terms of the glove box, you can see it's damped, it's lined with felt, uh, and it's a pretty big size. I also like the digital camera rear view mirror. Again, if you don't like that, you could just flip this down. It gives you a standard mirror uh, or this right here. You can also kind of adjust some of the settings, the brightness, the positioning of it. This is great if you regularly have stuff in the back that's kind of going up into the ceiling, or if you have tall friends, you can be still easy to see. And then above me, you can see this model here has the massive glass roof. It does open up, so you can kind of close the shade or you can kind of open this up. It only opens up over the front seats, but as you can see here, that's the biggest it'll open. It still lets in a lot of natural light and a lot of fresh air. So overall, the cabin of the new RX, I like how Lexus is throwing in everything into the F-Sport Performance model. So really, it doesn't leave me wanting for anything. It has a ton of room, great technology, and really high build quality. 
Checking out the back seat of the RX 500. Now, first of all, there is no more third row available, which means Lexus was able to focus on giving you a ton of space in the second row. Sadly, I don't have legroom figures just yet, but I do like how the Rioja red carries over into the back. You have really nice suede Alcantara with more of that red stitching. These seats, you can get a power reclining function to the seat. However, this one here has the manual function, but you can see it does offer a good amount of adjustability and recline for those of you who need to get comfortable back here. Now, stepping into the back seat, let me go ahead and show you guys what the space is like. The old RX had about 38 and a half inches of legroom. I'd say this is probably more because of that two and a half inch stretch in the wheelbase. Materials back here are pretty nice, nice uh, considering the fact that this is a pre-production car, you have the suede Alcantara, soft touch paneling here, leather stitching over here, same digital latch door handle back here, which you can open by pulling that twice if the power happens to go out. Uh, and then over here in the seat backs, you have two storage pockets, uh, two USB-C charging ports, a separate climate dial here. However, no heated and ventilated seats. Uh, I showed you guys the hybrid model, which was a premium plus. That is, again, an extra charge. You do have rear seat air vents, but I would highly recommend going for that option. Then you can see here, this armrest folds down, gives you a little bit of storage, which is nice, two cup holders. Uh, and then above me, the glass, the panoramic roof does come on, come into the back. This doesn't open up, but it does make for a pretty open and airy cabin. So overall, if you want to put child seats back here, or you want to put four full-size adults, the RX can certainly accommodate that. All right, so before we actually hop into the 500H F Sport Performance, which Lexus says is the most performance-oriented version of the RX, I actually have a surprise. We are quickly driving this European spec 450H Plus. This is the plug-in hybrid, and I want to find out, is this model actually quicker versus the 500H? And we brought our testing equipment. This vehicle has nearly a full charge on it. Um, but let's go ahead and just see what we can get here, zero to 60 wise. We'll go ahead and we'll floor it. We're in sport. It's in kilometers right now, so I'm a little confused on, on the speed, but 6.84 seconds, which that was going actually, I feel like slightly uphill. A little bit. Um, I do want to retry that again and see what we can get. It felt a lot more sluggish than I'm used to, because uh, remember, I had a RAV4 Prime for a year, and that thing always felt pretty fast. This is considerably heavier. This model is the, I want to say, is probably around the heaviest, but the Lexus didn't have any figures for the curb weight on this model. The F-Sport Performance is around almost 5,000 pounds. This should be pretty close to that. But what you do notice with the plug-in is it offers a lot of power. And just like the regular hybrid, it's a very seamless transition between electric and gas. Because remember, this uses a CVT. We've got a bigger 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack um, that gives us, I don't know how much range, but when this thing was fully charged, it was showing around 47 kilometers on a full charge, uh, which if you want to do some math, you can figure out what that is in miles. I'm going to estimate like around 35 miles or so of EV only range. Yeah, um, I did a little bit, but maybe this is just a really early pre-production one. I was in sport. I, I switched it now from auto EV to just hybrid mode. So, um, so let me show you. I'll mention that when we go yeah, no, do this thing. Yeah, it's all good information yeah. for them to know. It's funny. Yeah. It's <laughs> oh my God, we're going so fast right now. <laughs> 162 miles. <laughs> All right, so I want to try this again. This time I've switched the drive mode here from auto EVHV to just full hybrid um, because I want to see if we can get a little bit better because this does seem slightly slower than what I expected it to be. But let's just go ahead and stop from a stop here. Oh, that felt better. Definitely felt stronger there when I brake torqued it slightly. 6.16 seconds there, and that's on fairly level ground. So Lexus claims 5.9 for the F Sport Performance 500H. So I'll be curious to see what I get. I haven't driven that car yet, keep in mind, but I want to go, go back here into the EV mode because that's this is the beauty about the uh, 450H Plus. Just like the NX 450H Plus, when you put it into EV mode, this vehicle will essentially drive like an electric car, um, even when my foot goes to the floor. So if I put my foot down here all the way to the floor. It's obviously not as fast in this mode, but um, because of that much stronger battery or much larger battery pack, the bigger electric motor at the rear, um, it just drives like an EV, which is gonna be great for those of you who need to drive an electric only around town. You're gonna kind of have that option to do so. I'm gonna estimate around 35-ish miles perhaps on all electric only range. But even though it is considerably slower, because remember you have roughly half the power when you have it in this mode, um, I want to see what I can get 
in zero to 60 in just electric only. So still in sport, still in EV. It feels pretty strong, honestly, off the Double line. line yeah. Yes, because remember, we have only half the power. Come on, get to 60. Get to 60. 10.2 hey. 10. or 10.19 seconds. So. Still faster than <laughs> yeah, it's still faster, honestly. And, and to be honest, electric vehicles, they have all that instant torque right off the line. So even though like it's not that fast in terms of the numbers, it still feels great around town. And that's the whole purpose of this vehicle. And what I love is I can floor it literally floored it and the gas engine doesn't come on. I think that's the proper way to do a plug-in hybrid. So many others, you floor it, it demands full power so it wakes up the gas engine even when it has a full charge. And I think Lexus and Toyota definitely does it the right way. So obviously we have a baseline 6.1 for this. Let's go ahead and hop into the 500H and see what we can get. 40, 40 kilometers is 24.8 miles. Okay, so. okay. So after just hopping out of the 450H Plus, the plug-in hybrid model, now we are in the version of the RX that I have been waiting to drive since Lexus announced this vehicle. As you can see, as you can see I've also kicked Rob out. He's actually back at the, uh, the stop point, or at the lunch spot, uh, dumping footage. Uh, and we are in this beautiful uh, per, or pure white F-Sport Performance 500H. Uh, basically what that means is we now have the turbocharged engine, that 2.4 liter turbo, with two electric motors. So we've got a motor in the front and a really powerful powerful rear axle at the back. Now that rear axle supposedly offers 80 kilowatts of power, um, which is the same as what you get in the BZ4X. Now the first thing I wanna test out is the zero to 60 performance. It's in sport mode right now. We'll floor it and build boost. Ooh, it's actually spinning the tires. <laughs> Whoa. 5.69 seconds, so 5.7 seconds on my first run. And Lexus, remember, they claim 5.9 seconds in this powertrain. And I have to say, I just, or getting the opportunity to drive every engine in the RX family, uh, I, got, I just got out of the 450H Plus, but I also drove the NX350, the standard turbo engine without the separate E motor at the back. And I have to say this powertrain with the rear axle powered by electric by an electric motor, it basically dumps the turbo lag that that engine had because I thought it had a little bit of noticeable turbo lag. So put your foot down, it just kind of, ooh, it just really goes. And unlike other hybrid systems from Toyota and Lexus, we have a six speed automatic transmission as opposed to a CVT. It's a performance option, or it's a, it, Lexus chose a six speed for performance reasons. Oh, I'm surprised they do use a six speed as opposed to an eight, but regardless, it has really crisp shifts. I'm actually genuinely surprised. Let's go ahead and try it one more time here. We're gonna floor it again. We're not gonna brake torque at this time. We're just gonna floor it. Man, there's no turbo lag because of the that electric motor, 5.71 seconds there. So very consistent power delivery, very consistent times, and it just feels really peppy and that's kind of what I was expecting for something that's electrified with a powerful electric motor at the back. Actually, it feels a lot like the BZ4X when it first initially takes off because you feel that instant power, the instant torque from the rear electric motor, uh, which fills in the gaps while the turbo builds boost and spools up and it gives you, again, up to 367 horsepower. So that is fantastic. I am genuinely shocked with how quick this 500H F Sport Performance is. I suspect that a lot of enthusiasts are gonna be surprised when they drive this because this is the quickest accelerating RX that Lexus has ever made. And it finally makes this car less of like a mommy type mobile, like this family vehicle that's a boring type of realtor car. It finally feels really nice to drive because anytime I put my foot down, you feel that electric motor torque. It just pushes you back in the seat. It's really responsive, it's really re direct. The six-speed auto has a manual mode here so I can mimic shifts. Or you just put your foot down here, it will automatically shift and it, it actually shifts quickly. I'm shocked because the eight-speed auto in the regular NX350 didn't shift as quick as this. This actually shifts a little bit faster, so I'm genuinely surprised. Now, this model here does have adaptive dampers, 21-inch wheels, and it also has the rear axle steering, which means It'll actually steer the rear wheels at these higher speeds up to four degrees in the same direction or opposite if you're at lower speeds to shrink the turning radius. 
the stability of this car feels good. The, the ride's a little bumpy in sport mode right now. I do wish that the F Sport Performance model had um, a drive mode button. I hate how I have to go into the screen here, but I'll go into custom here. This is my mode where I basically put the suspension into soft, a comfort mode, and then I put everything else into sport. The ride does settle down in this mode and it feels more like an RX. Um, the Basically, if you want the softest ride, go for the luxury-oriented trims or the premium or premium plus trims. The F Sport definitely gives you a firmer ride, but it's kind of expected. You know, this vehicle looks aggressive on the outside. It handles very well. The steering offers a surprising amount of feedback uh, or, and it's just really precise as well. The body stays relatively flat, although right now I have the dampers in uh, softer mode. So now it's in sport again, you can see really shocked actually at how well this vehicle transitions. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, it's not what I'd say like BMW XM quickness, but this is pretty much on par with uh, an X5 um, 40i, like with the M Sport package. It's not like an X5 M, but this is really good, honestly. I'm, I'm genuinely shocked. And then the brakes, this model here, much larger brakes. I'm noticing the pedal feels good, really nice bite. They don't feel like they're gonna, uh, it doesn't feel mushy at all. And then it also doesn't have those weird regen hybrid brakes, but floor it here, spins out the front tires a little bit. <laughs> really impressive, wow, shocked, I'm shocked. I wasn't expecting to be as impressed with this powertrain as I am, but uh, after driving the, all the family members, I mean, I wanna come back to the 450H plus, that model did 0 to 60 in 6.16 seconds. This one here, 5.7 seconds. So it's a nice improvement and it's definitely worthy, I think, of that uh, F Sport Performance badge. So Lexus, bravo, I'm genuinely shocked and I am looking forward to spending a full week with this car where I can put it through a little bit more testing and we can test out the fuel economy because that's unfortunately what I don't have here is fuel economy testing, but this car is rated to get like 26 or 27, 26 MPG, which isn't bad. Um, but remember this model here isn't meant for fuel economy. Go for the regular 350H if you guys want to get the best gas mileage possible out of your RX. So after spending the day driving the entire RX family, but more specifically focusing on this model here, the 500H F Sport Performance, I have to admit, I am very impressed with what Lexus has done here. Now, obviously the company is on a mission to completely redesign their entire lineup and make the cars more tech forward, more performance oriented, and even more luxurious. And I think they've succeeded. This model in particular really surprised me. Zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds is quicker versus Lexus's claim and about two seconds faster versus the regular RX 350 and still about a half a second faster versus the plug-in hybrid version, although that was a European spec model. So I'll have to wait until I can retest that vehicle whenever the US version comes out. Uh, really, the interior of this car also is full of all of the latest tech features. It has a ton of room. I love the new infotainment system. I love the interior materials. The seats are also extremely comfortable. Really, if I have to kind of ding the RX, um, it's where this model here fits in the lineup. I mean, you could compare this car to something like the Acura MDX Type S, which I also thought was an excellent option. Kind of disappointed that Acura didn't offer an electrified option. This kind of is technically that vehicle. Its performance is pretty similar. And you could also compare it to cars like the Audi Q7 or a BMW X5 with just the six cylinder engine. I don't think this competes with something like the X5 xDrive 45e, which is a plug-in hybrid. I do kind of wish that Lexus had made this a plug-in hybrid. If they made it with a bigger battery pack, the same one from the NX450 and made it like around 450 horsepower. That would certainly be, be interesting, but it also would drive the cost of. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are looking to get your hands on this car, Lexus says that they are starting production of this vehicle at their plant in Canada. Some of them will also be built in Japan um, in October of this year. So you're gonna have to wait a few more months. Lexus says they should be in dealerships toward the end of the year. And pricing has not been announced yet. I was hoping that Lexus would have final pricing for this vehicle at this event, but we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. The current generation RX starts at around $47,000 and goes up to $65,000. I'm gonna suspect they're gonna start at around 50 grand for the base version. This model here, however, is a new model that we've never seen Lexus offer before. And it has a lot of performance, a lot of luxury, and a lot of technology. So I suspect this one, if I had to guess, is probably priced a little over $70,000, maybe 72 grand. It's right along the same lines as, as an MDX Type S, but you are gonna get more performance, you are gonna get um, better fuel efficiency, and you also get uh, a nicer, uh, infotainment system, I think, with a larger display. 
and also the fact that it's a touchscreen. So in general, I think Lexus has done a phenomenal job with this car. They could have made it even better by making it a plug-in hybrid, but I do think that the RX 500h finally has the performance to compete with a lot of its European and its direct rival, the MDX Type S. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 RX 500h F Sport Performance. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.